shown it, right? And like, just going off like, Asian players when Graves is meta, usually the West is doomed when that happens. So, I mean, if Wei picks it up, that's definitely a, 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 an extra tool to have in your toolkit. But having DRX on that blue side with the likes of Hecarim also being available, which we have seen so many times already today, that could also be something to look forward to. And crucially, the Kai'Sa have made its way through the first ban phase. Yeah, I, I feel like those are the big things, right? For DRX, I'm definitely expecting the Hecarim. That's something that Wei is actually good on. And then seeing where Kai'Sa ends up, because I feel like the AD carry meta is still very unexplored. Like, we've yeah. seen the Kai'Sa. We saw Tristana once. I've been hearing in scrims that Tristana actually something that's seen more play. Things like the Ezreal that we haven't seen picked up yet either. So I'm really curious, especially with Deft on the Rift. He plays absolutely everything. Definitely. And having seen that Fiora be the first ban as well, it makes a lot of sense when you see the Aatrox be the second one to come through as well. Seeing Vi be picked, be very uphill, but I'd be curious to see at this play-ins as well. Oh my god, this would actually be crazy because RNG were really the first team in LPL that gravitated towards this pick. Really, no one else was picking it up, but Wei loves it. 11 games played, eight of them victories this summer. First pick, it's followed up with that Jax. Six games played, five of them victories for Breathe. Yeah. I mean, Breathe, the carry top laner. Heck, we've seen this matchup before even in the LPL. King and used to play on BLG is Wait, more what? of that weak side top laner. And I know you love this pick. I love the tree. We haven't really seen it in the jungle yet, but I'm a big fan of what Riot has done to it so far. And Sekar on the Akali, that's not even just a DRX special. That's a special from all the way back when he was actually playing in the LPL. Um, it's curious to see, though, blind pick. It's usually a champion. You want to know what you're playing into. You want to be sure that it's actually fulfilling the right circle circumstances where you can take charge in lanes and giving that counter pick over to Shahu, he's actually going to be equalizing on it and picking up the LeBlanc. It's actually really surprising to me to see how draft has panned out so far because I feel like you have a lot of like Maokai, Akali, champions that necessarily pr go pretty hard into their certain niches, right? Yeah. Akali going to be able to play through sides, look for those flanks of Maokai, wanting those front to backs. And now I think RNG going to have, have a lot of ways to pivot around it, especially with their bottom lane picks. I think immobile AD carries, though, going to feel a little bit rough for both sides when we have assassins on the rim. Yeah, they're going to be struggling. I think having AD carries that can both self-peel is going to be super crucial, which is why you also see champions ban the way you like the Sire, but also just champions with the disengage like the Tristana is something I could totally see some of these two AD carries be picking up. Kaiser, of course, with that self heal isn't an option as well, but having Kaiser into Maokai with short range playing into a guy that can flash W on you, that, is, that could be very crucial to play against, or difficult to play against, rather. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that DRX ban it out, considering that Aatrox is another champion that really likes playing against things that come in. Nila? Whoa! Nila for Gala! We always describe him as a player who likes to play champions that go in, but this was a pick that was not really really brought into the LPL whatsoever. Super interesting to see. So we've seen some of it in Europe, at least. Patrick, one of the few guys that actually put it out and had some decent success with it. Now we have to see Gala finally piloting. It's a short range. It's not like Kaiser, but might as well be a little bit. Who knows? First professional game on Nila. First Nila of Worlds. And if you haven't seen her, she's basically just a water Pokemon variant of Samira. The answer is going to be the Tristana from Death. Not too surprising. And there's one last pick, Chat Barrel. Currently hovering the rail. Do you want to see more engage? Oh, yeah. I, I would actually really like to see the rel here going up against something like Anila. Just rel does so well against short range champions oh, yeah. where you don't need to waste something like a flash to be able to find that engage. You need a lot of value out of your ultimate, just being able to jump in and lock people down. So, so far, I kind of like what DRX has put oh. together to where I feel like RG is pretty volatile. And this is going to sound weird, and you do lack some really good engage, but what would really stop at the bot lane coming through from DRX would actually be a thrash from Ming. Now, I don't expect to actually see it, but having that play against both these champions could be crucial. But my once again, I think they lack more engage right now and something that follows up with the buy. So going for, for example, the Alice down here, this is really a good pick too. So Gulbog, zoom out a little bit and tell me about how these two team compositions are going to play out. It's a very different look from what we've seen throughout the course of today, but how do they win? I definitely think RNG is way more skirmish heavy than DRX, DRX potentially have. In a team fight scenario, having that Maokai and the follow-up get with it is going to be super easy to play along with. Jax is probably the only one where I'm looking at 
and he's going to be a little more struggling in that scenario, but there's still something to play for with the follow-up you get from a LeBlanc and a buy in the 2v2. The one thing I'm really afraid of for RNG is, like, you look at Garrus' comp, and, like, they have ranged DPS that's going to scale throughout the game. You have things... You have so many tanky champions where Gala Shahu, they're going to be looking to jump in to find that assassination potential, which I don't know if it's there if they don't find sizable early leads, right? For RNG, it's going to be a lot about picking off individual targets yeah. with the Vila Blanc combo, and I feel like they're going to have to put a lot of attention down towards their side lane. And I on deft here because, like, you got the buffer on the Tristana W into the Alistar. Like, it's quite easy to play into it and keep yourself disengaged and self field as we also talked about. So I think for Dev, he's got all the tools that he kind of needs playing into the conversation of RNG. I mean, eyes on Dev. There's a sentence I wasn't expecting to say today. Oh, yeah, you're, you're welcome. I said it. And I'm very intrigued to see how well DRX will perform. There's a lot of... Um, Let's say questions, maybe criticisms around their performance coming into it. Goldberg, that line was fantastic. The only team at Worlds with a negative win ratio at 49%. RNG, of course, the MSI champions had a also challenging uh, end to their summer season. What can they make? What statement will they make, especially with this Nila in the bottom lane? Oh, yeah, and I'm excited to see because we had Nila once in the LPL brought out by LGD. How was able to Was able to find a win, not necessarily because of the Nila, but the overwhelming sentiment by LPL players about Nila was like, hey, this champion in lane, way too weak. Any of us could stomp this in a 2v2. And I mean, going up against Deft, right, highlighting DRX, Deft was that standout player for their side. He was the one with the ability to carry, and we know he can come out with strong 2v2s, but we got a level one. Oh, Barrel's gonna be forced to crash down with that Ferromancy and get out to safety. Yeah, I really think that's a big one as well. Being the bot lane when you're playing into Anila, it feels so good if you don't have to leash. Like, if you get to either just make them slow push into you, if you drag the minion wave when it spawns, um, or you just get to take charge with it and really punish the fact that she does not have a good level one and you have paired her with the worst support level one we also have in the game in the Alistar. Like, if you can deny as many resources on the first few waves as possible, that's a death off very well, at least for the first three waves. Yeah, and that's why I feel like a lot of this is actually going to come down to, to mid-jungle because it's like, okay, DRX having that bio in the bot, they have they have a solid matchup, but for RNG, they have the winning mid-jungle. Shao having that electrocute should be able to do pretty well in these trades and then Wei going to be able to do a lot more early on than P.O. Schick on the mouth I'll just give a quick shout out to the fans in Mexico. We've been cheering all day long, but I think in particular, I was quite surprised by how loud that RNG cheer was. Great interrupt there from Ming, preventing Trail to get that crash down. And Gala is using that water whip to slap away, but explosive charge bullies him already. And I want to see whether or not Gala can actually you know, step up to this Rel on the bottom. Now, when Rel finally started getting the few buffs she needed to be played in competitive, it was quite often Alistar into Rel we did see play against each other. Now, Rel actually has an interesting interaction with her E where she can actually stun Alistar mid W, so he can't get the Q off to cancel that. But in return, of course, Alistar as well will often just pulverize whenever the, the, the Rel is going to be jumping in. So it's a very neutralizing matchup between the two supports, which can make aggression a little hard to pull off. Ooh, Zika, Zika's dropped low, 110 HP. Now playing the bait game. Kyosik oh. making a Whoa, step forward shout. inside the Shroud. The five-point Shuriken comes in. The Bramble Smash pops out. That's the clone killed, and Shao escaped with his life. Really nice by Shao to get away from that. I thought he was being a little bit greedy. Nice setup from DRX, but aren't able to manage to find it in the end. LeBlanc, at least one of those champions, even when you don't have Flash, you're not really too vulnerable in the laning phase, but still, it's going to have to be extra careful now, especially with Pioshik. Always going to have that opportunity to just look for a Flash W. Of course, Shahu has played against uh, second multiple times as well beforehand as well when he was playing in the LPL, so this is not a matchup he's unfamiliar with, so I'm sure there's some extra payback in that regard that he just wins to send him his last farewell in this single round Robin, at least, to really take charge in the mid lane. You know, I'm sad Chronicler's in here because <laughs> I've been ribbing him all day about DRX being our fifth seed. Zekka, LPL two years. Kingen, LPL for a year. Deft, everyone remembers EDG. Deft. All right, I'll take the Chronicler stance here instead and then say, well, EDG, what about the Koreans you have on that roster? Uh, <laughs> what about some of the Koreans uh, you have no, no. in the other role? Oh, oh. I like that. Chronicler's made both of those statements. This is fact, by the way. Quote me on that. As Kingen is now being jumped on. Oh. Flash is very nicely done on that dash away to save the humble chain. Catch and breathe, but a very good escape from Kingen. Just great move overall, and Kingen has been one of the players on DRX that has been questionable, that hasn't had the best time 
over in the LCK, but expecting this pressure to come out, Breathe being on the Jax matchup, you know you could set up for the, these easy ganks. And then RNG was playing a lot towards topside once we were in playoffs and in regionals in the LPL. So uh, just really nice diligence coming out for King. Hold up here. Okay, they did fake that back from the side of DRX bot lane here. Um, could have gone for a Cheetah with a slow wave push wave coming in, but they wanted to see if they could threaten the needle, see if anyone was going to overextend between Ming and Gala. On the top side here, Pyoshik Ooh. actually getting a bit creative, just as straight off the reset, looking for a lane gang. No flash on Brief, remember. Yeah, I think this play is really interesting. I mean, the wave is coming in, and we see where Wei is passing down towards that bot side. And knowing Brief, he's going to go for it, boys. No. He's going to all in, they're going to find it. There's no Counter-Strike available. It's going to be up just in a moment or two for Brief. You know, Pyoshik is still just chilling. Chilling, floating. It's a knockup, Dark in Blade, the leap comes out. Thermal Smash forward, knocks him sideways, and he's able to escape. They completely oh, messed that no, up. Oh, that's a shame. That's a real shame. I'm honestly mind blown. You knew that Breathe was going to go for it, looking for that angle. Kingen was baiting it perfectly, but Breathe able to, to leap strike away. And now RNG going to be set up with a very early first strike. Yeah, exactly. Mid lane pushed in. Shahu does have that teleport if he wants to join the fray. Bot lane with Ming and Gala has also just been shoved. And with that, they're able to secure some pressure on the Drake. Now, Drake's at this point in the game still decently tanky, but once again, with Pyoshik showing on that top side there's none of the rx who's actually going to win it walk in to try and contest it and this will be the earliest drake we've had at world sending a message to loud who conceded and secured six minute 35s rng early out the gate now in comparison to first dragons oh. they only rank 10th in the lpl 50 percent of the games do they secure it but i think what's interesting about both of these teams as fourth seeds it is very important to remember that statistically throughout the course of their respective seasons to qualify for worlds neither team has really been particularly impressive, right? No. And the expectations are low from regional fans for both of these teams. Yeah, I mean, for DRX, right, there's been a lot of struggles with their jungle position. I mean, actually, a lot of people are surprised that Juhan isn't playing yeah, this exactly. game. He was so critical in, in their regional series to be able to get here, pulling out the wins in all five games. And But Pioshik coming back in, has actually been looking at a lot of aggression. We can see him constantly hovering towards these sides, has already been around mid, has already ganked top, and it's only t it's only a matter of time for the bot lane player. Yeah, before RNG, it also just felt like a patching as well. Like, in the beginning, it looked good for them with the kind of like, okay, Shahun and facilitation, you just look to play around the rest of the map. But then when it became Enchanter and a Seer mid, they're really struggling, especially against the likes of EDG, for example, which all of a sudden the meta just suited them perfectly. So RNG also almost getting reverse swept against LNG in their last series before finally making it to world so it's been a it's been a bumpy ride for both of them to get here now we need to see whether or not rng will be able to adapt to the world's patch and meta already throwing out a very different look that by Nila for his times today observers did a great job of highlighting just a moment ago the um, wards that rng had placed deep in drx's jungle pioshik clearly spotted out on the crugs and now way stepping forward Assault and battery is available to him. Whether he decides to use it, season desist rather. Holds on to the trigger. Our ball chains come out. Ball breaker slam down. Cease desist. RNG first play. Flashes to guarantee that it goes through. Gonna now cement an advantage for Breathe. They're gonna get this wave in. Kingen does have TP, so shouldn't lose out on too much. But with Harold coming up in 20 seconds, getting some pressure up towards the top side is pretty nice. Yeah, most definitely. And even though uh, the bot lane is also stabilizing now, as you can see, actually Ming is gonna the one with the first reset as well. So with resets coming through from the top lane, with TPs just being burned, with item, I say, uh, item and advantages start being built up from RNG, they can look to try and move their rotation off towards that Herald to, to continue to elevate their gold lead. I do want to say though, right, we're, we're, we're building up RNG now, starting to find a bit of a lead, but coming out of draft, DRX's comp to me does strike more of needing time, right? They are the one with more of a traditional ranged marksman. Akali will be able to do better against uh, the LeBlanc later in the game, and and even having, I think, a bit of a beefier front line with the Maokai on top of the Rel. So I think for DRX, not too bad if they start to fall in a bit of a hole. I mean, for Death, that draw to be passive, gonna be so crucial. He's currently 10 CS down versus Garland Ming in that bottom lane. And we were anticipating a slightly more strategic, slower game than what we have seen throughout the course of the day. I mean, Lyric, as soon as you stepped up, you said, this could be a slow burn, boys. And we're so far building up towards that. But I am very happy to see RNG striking. First, they got the first dragon two minutes away from the next dragon. 
I don't think a lot of people would have favored RNG in this matchup and they got the comp to pull up the early advantages. Yeah, and I, I think especially with that slow burn, right? RNG were never one of the teams who were more towards that stereotypical LPL play style. Yeah. Of, okay, it's all about blood all the time. No, RNG have always been about their mid game, being able to play the map, play around side lanes, you know, just strategically outplay teams by trading up in sides. DRX on the opposite end. I feel like it's very hard to put DRX in a box, yeah. which is pretty nice because like Jat was saying on the desk, right? We don't like to put teams in boxes. DRX, we've seen people like Zeka care Death can step up. They've played towards sides. They've played team fight. It's kind of been a team that's been able to do a bit of it all. Now, I feel like from the side of RNG, you can clearly tell where they had most of that priority, right? Riftel had gone over to the favor of DRX, but just going from the vision, you can clearly see it here. They get so much intel. Crocs brought it up, pushed straight out of wet buff, also coming through in the board, just outside of tri -bush. It's really setting up a nice strike for them, and with Wei just fi finally hitting his back, he picks up the Kimpunk Twain Sword, and that's just going to be great, at least for having that extra item advantage when you're gearing up for Drake that's spawning in 40 seconds. I mean, again, the Observer's highlighting all of that deep vision from RNG. It's allowing Golan Ming to maybe survive the early games a little bit too strong of a, of a phrasing. They're currently on marginally ahead. It picked up an early Drake, setting themselves up for a second one. They got the earliest Drake of the day thus far. But I do want to know how this Neela is going to play out throughout the course of these team fights. It's not a champion we've seen a significant amount of. So, you know, how do you want to see Gala pilot? Two to three items in the mid game. That's usually where we see these Neela really go online. It's when you get all the life seed that you need. And uh, I'm going to hold it just for a second because but he's definitely threatening a play right now. And assist, as well as Maokai Bioshik in range. He is going to be able to escape with his life for now. Still got the ultimate to chase forward. Sapling, suicide! Not going to find the damage. And no further burst. Xiaohu dashes forward once more as he committed the ultimate. Now the Cloud Drake is up. And neither jungler has their ulti. Yeah, I feel like both both these players, they'll play on a nice edge in the mid lane. DRX have to be a bit careful because we've seen Ming has that prio in that bot site, so was leaning up towards the river. With the trades that we've seen coming out heavily, you know, both mid laners losing a lot of HP, doesn't feel like it's safe for either team to look for a Drake, but DRX still kind of angling for wanting to try and retake some bot side control. Yeah, but it's just a little, like, more of attrition between the two teams here. You can see they take tit for tit, tat for tat, and now finally having that bot lane priority, they can move themselves up, but it's still being done in vision, and it's just trying to take away as much information from the enemy team. Death is not really endangered as he does have the buff on the jump, even if Mink does go for that engage. But it's really just a fi about finding a pickup that can lead to this Drake, and so far nothing's really biting on any bait. Yeah, I feel like for RNG, you, you now need Xiao to look for a back, right? Zeka just coming off his back, gonna drop the Herald now, so having some pretty good prio in mid. Now, Lyric, you mentioned that uh, the DRX comp was looking for some time. 12 minutes in, they get the Rift Herald, they get some plates onto Zika Zakali. Are you starting to feel comfortable, nervous, uh, in terms of when you look at these compositions and how they play out? I feel like RNG at least have the buffer of having the jacks, so they should always yeah. have an option of like being able to play out and win through sides and get pressure through that. And for RNG, something like that has always been enough to at least have some level of faith in their play. I feel like the scary thing later on will just be 5v5s, right? Zeka going into Shroud, he creates so much space, and then Death Free hitting on the back. I think this is just where you start up the Drake. As you just mentioned before, Shahu Hat just been back. He finished up that Luton's Echo mythic item compared to Sekka, who's still sitting on Kodafonin. So this should just be the Cloud Drake going over to the side of RNG with resets and bot lane being pushed in by Death at the moment. And when we're saying for, for RNG, right, it's scrappier, it's skirmishier, you typically want to get those done in the mid game. If they can push themselves onto Soul Point early on and force DRX yeah, to exactly. fight them before they're really stronger, no way. Be the play for no them. way! No. no way! That was so cool. It didn't ultimately like end in anything, but the third strike Dark and Blade into the uh, Umbral Change was so good. I feel like it's so cool. I feel like especially just coming in with the expectations of Kingen. Like even people from the LCK are like, ah, you know, yeah, yeah it's the thing. he plays weak side. He's all right, and he's he's been faring well for himself mechanically, outplaying Breathe on a few occasions. Oh, oh man, though. the empowered strike, counter. -strike Strike's gonna come out, can't find the stun, gets away at least from some of those autos, yep. finds the stun, that's a, and it's 50%. Yep. That's, that's on you guys. I'm just saying you set it up there, and it looked cold for a second, but brief uh, cost takes the it right back. I wanna, I wanna take credit for that one. <laughs> yeah. You know what, if RNG win, let's, let's give it to us. Yeah. You are using your power for bias, my friend, but it was beautiful to watch, Lyric.
You know, that's what I'm here to do. That's again, <laughs> that's why we had to make it seem like Jat is the LPL buy swing on the yeah, desk. I so see I can come and influence the matchup. But Man, kind of truly LPL I animus just 200 IQ. Not just about the game, but about weren't uh weren't you one of us? Yeah. <laughs> I lost some IQ and was kicked, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to LEC. <laughs> Well played, go box. RNG are up a thousand gold, two kills to zero, and it's felt like the impact of uh, we're moving around the map. Just marginally more successful. Pioshik level nine on this jungle, Maokai. First time we've seen it today. Gilborg going to look for potential engage. Distortion is available. That's one of the escape tools just been used. Flashes up too. I am going to say now, jungle Maokai. This stage of the game, early game. Uh, to be expected, did you want to see more? Are I, you happy I feel with like this? it's definitely one of the things where you could have taken a bit more judge. The one that just did go wrong was the top side play they had. That should have probably resulted yeah. in a kill. And when that didn't happen, well, Brief got to stabilize again. And it's going to put Kingdom in this position where, well, we just saw it before, right? Yeah. And we've seen, right? I feel like the most surprising thing to me is the fact that both teams have been fighting so heavily over control of mid, right? We've yeah. seen both Pioshik and Wei in the mid lane numerous times when both of these mid lane champions are incredibly hard to gank. I feel like Pioshik has tried to be active. Like, he's literally been around all three lanes yeah. pretty much constantly, but there just isn't a whole lot of opportunity there with what RNG's picked up. But it's not only just that, it's also just a pathway to the mid lane. Like, River is just being walked back and forth between every lane every single time. Drop in a ping board, take away the ping board, get whatever control you have. Now, Wei, back on the top side, Kinkin does have that flash, and he does have the intel that Wei's around now. Pioshik, what do you do with this? Still looking at Rift Herald actually, just outside of Vision, but Wei will be spotting this now. Xiaohu's on a reset, and even Ming is going back to base, so this could just be DRX picking up the Rift Herald. Yeah, it's pretty interesting that Xiaohu's even considering pathing towards there, because Barrel's showing in mid right now, so there really shouldn't be any opportunity for RNG to look for the contest. Looks like they were hoping maybe if DRX made a misstep and started to send members back to lanes early on, they could go for a bit of a Houdini and just swipe it from under them, but DRX aren't going to give them the chance. Yeah. Yeah, but good presence of mind as well from DRX. Finally, they have the first move from the bot line and they utilize that to the fullest. Now with Rift held and a very low mid lane trade, you could look for this, but you could also just look to leverage the manpower and try and take it down, but they're going to pop Rift held immediately. I really like from DRX the investment in Vision and set up the player that was ultimately really safely secured. Tower first blood now picked up. Kingan gets caught out by that cease and desist. Infernal chains by some time. Way's taking a lot of damage, but Breathe closes it up. 2 zero, one on a Jax versus first tower and an instant tower apply. This is where you start to get nervous for DRX. Yeah, I feel like both teams kind of got something that yes. really heavily benefits them because for RNG now, you have the extended side lane, which you know that Jax is going to do well into. And for DRX breaking open mid, I mean, you don't have a ton of wave clear. Actually, you have no wave clear on the side of RNG. So where DRX have this Tristana, which can really just be an annoyance with that passive continuously pushing them in. I mean, such a scary thing. The thing for me is despite the fact both teams getting an advantage, a 2-0-1, Divine Sundra Jax at 16 minutes already, will start it back away and spend, is terrifying. As an aside as well, um, Lyric, as you know, I love meaningful, important stats, right? Quick stats, they are my passion. I want to let you know that at 15 minutes, RNG had the highest amount of CSD at 5,558 creep score. It's, it's, it's important, it isn't it? I, I gotta say, I am so happy I have finally gotten to experience a quick stat. Yes! Oh, my word. <laughs> yes! This, yeah. You are welcome to cost me anytime. Gulborg has given me no love at all. My See you time. later, yeah, buddy. It's okay. It's not going to be the first time. Now, Drake will be spawning in 15 seconds. Jet lag in 11 hours is killing me. Either way, mid lane will be pushed in and RNG securing control for themselves. What would be the third Drake of the game? How does DRX start this fight, Gulborg? When I look at the vision... Oh, you could have asked Lyric. I know, but I want you to tell me. Take a look at this as RNG have started it. And DRX, do they consider the fight? There's no World Ender available for Aatrox, but they do have nature's grasp available to them. Yeah, and that's the big one as well. This long-range Maokai ultimate that has been up in the missile speed as well. When it's finally going forward, it can be really crucial in terms of splitting members apart. I think the big one for RNG, though, is the fact you have a reliable cow to stand behind. So he's tanked us up. That's going to be oh. great. Sekka. Oh, chains caught inside the Twilight Shroud. And now all of a sudden, RNG starting to back away. Breathe has found a flank opportunity. On to death. Gets the leap in power. Did not use the Counter-Strike. Holding on to it. Infernal Chains pulls backwards. And that's Breathe. 
Korea down. Jeff picks up the first of the fight. He continues to fire away, uncontested, unchallenged. Rocket jumps forward, gets the reset, no. waits for the jump, the boop, the pop. Zhao Hu's going to be able to get away to safety. And Pioshik, the Bramble smash, was beautiful. The tree does it. And RNG are getting dunked. Four members down, one remaining. And Zhao Hu's running for his life, limping. No flash available. Gets at least one back for the Bud Light Ace. And Zeft is showing us why he makes an appearance on the international stage so often. 3-0 to on the Tristana already. He's massive. And it's such a pivotal way to do it as well. It's the third drag that you fight RNG on. If they get that under fight, that's pretty much the game over because you manage to stabilize, you find a team fight, and you get Death ahead of the curve. You fight your way back into the game. I'm going to bring it back to that joke I made earlier, but that slow, steady, stable farming early game gave enough time for DRX to pick up this fight. It's one of those things where RNG thought they had found the Akali, but they kind of opened themselves up yes. to this numbers disadvantage fight on the top side. I get what Bree thinks he's finding, jump on a death, but the other members of RNG aren't close enough to really capitalize. It's also just the ultimate deficit that they currently find themselves in. Because they utilize so much in the Akali, they don't have the proper tools to start a team fight. Gala wants to jump in there when they buy ults, and they just pile on one member and blow them up. But because you're so isolated and you find the fight at different times, it just doesn't work out for RNG. And it's funny, because despite, again, getting wiped in this fight, we can see on the bottom right-hand corner of our screen, oh. it's not, it's not dissuading the aggression coming out from RNG is... Uh, DRX, DRX coaching staff, ecstatic, and hey, again, when I do feel like RNG were slight favorites over them coming into this group, they have reason to be excited. I mean, really good start here. Def 302 after that fight. We did talk about the fact all eyes on Def, the Tristana as an option. Uh, currently at level 12, continuing to increase that range. Gala on the Nila, 011. I'm waiting for two and three items. That is obviously where she's really gonna come online. And if DRX group up, that Apotheosis is going to be gigantic. Yeah, the big thing with Nila is the fact that so much of her kid scales with critical chance. And when you finally pick up that Rift Hell, you will get way more value in your kid in terms of the extra armor penetration you get out of it, the range from EQ, of course, and of course, just the lifesteal that builds into it. Like we've seen so many times as well, Nila just fourth item up the into that Death Stance. That's going to do great wonders when you see Death is one of the main carries from the RX2. I do feel like for RNG, though, we might have to start looking at other members, right? Because again, even when Gala gets on those item power spikes, you're going to be jumping into a Rel, into a Maokai, into an Aid Shock. Oh, so I feel yeah. like Shaohu and Breathe are going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting. And can I tell you, the fact that we're playing for a Hextech Soul actually terrifies me because Jax, Vi, Nila, all going to be really happy with that. Akali, Aatrox, Tristana, all going to be really happy for that. So this is a very impactful soul. It's almost like it's the best in the game. <laughs> but I think more so the, the point to get at there is just the fact that like literally like all the damage dealers and carries will benefit from the stats that it's going to give you. And on RNG, it's two dragons to one, but now they are behind in kills. They are behind in gold. And this kind of slow burn of a game could become extremely explosive in team fights, or if Breathe is able to control the side. I mean, this might go wild, like a long time. Just taking a look at how slow they deal with the outer turrets, both teams are not really making any progress. They've both taken care of once, but we're at 22 minutes into the game in just a bit, and they've only removed one of each side of it. This is really the definition of a slow burner, which we have said yeah. quite a lot so far. And it's just because there's not too many tools to just take agency and lane and start pushing it in. I, I feel like when I'm looking at like the maps it right now though for rng you have to start looking at opportunities to like overcommit to a side right kind of accept gala is going to get pushed in in mid send ming and way up towards top get the push and then maybe make a play where shao is tp make a double soul lane play on sides because i feel like anywhere drx group up right now they should just be favored. So RNG have to look for creative ways to burn these TPs into force picks. It's just that. You can also just go for it resets at the same time, look for two solo laners just shadowing in a bush because quite often you don't expect two solo laners standing on the same planes. We've seen quite a few teams started doing it in newer times as well to just find people off guard. But so far, they're both answering to the same strategy. They're just waiting around. And I just feel like we're not going to get too much action unless they find Seeker again, which we've already seen them be unsuccessful until we finally see that in, uh, in next race come through. I mean, I think every time I look at the minimap, um, in the early game, I had to respect RNG's warding on the bottom quadrant to allow the dragons and, and give Gala the safety lane. But I think as we've moved now 10, 12 minutes plus, both the defensive and the proactive warding from DRX 
has really allowed them to not be flanked. And when you think of Jax, Vi, LeBlanc, Alistair, any one of those champions is very happy coming from out of vision, coming from behind from a strange angle. There's a lot of mobility on the comp, but RNG haven't been allowed to do that because DRX have got great vision though. Yeah, and I, I feel like there's a way to sum up how the vision's played out, right? For RNG, they've kind of had like very controlled in one place vision, like bot side or top side to where DRX, look at it, this whole game, yeah. it's typically been like a neutral line across the whole map to see where everyone is because they feel comfortable. Hey, as long as like action doesn't come out against us, we're fine. And those saplings are definitely doing work. I think every time we catch Bioshik running past or whatnot, just chucking out one of those little um, space boys. And we've seen it playing a little bit, like a great highlight again. You cannot under uh, estimate, cannot like, it really quantifies just how valuable that amount of information is in a game like that. I mean, it's so annoying too, right? Especially when you're playing LeBlanc, Vi, Jax, like yes. all these champions yes. that want to go into brushes, come off weird angles. Piyoshi just says no. Oh no, this could be scary. This could be scary. One, two, three versus four. Three versus four. Crashdown comes out. Magnet as well. DRX is on a rampage. Looking for the fifth and he finds it. The dragon's available. RNG thought they were hunting, but they got hunted. It starts with the tree and they pick up two kills for free. Dev yet another time securing it. 5-0 on the Tristana and picking up two Hextech Drakes for themselves now. It starts with the tree and they get two for free and that makes Lyric happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I gotta apologize to people like Atlas out there. Chronicler, I've been ribbing them quite a bit, but uh, for DRX, I mean, when we've been talking about RNG wanting to make these plays towards sides, wanting to look for these picks, like, if we know that, you know who else knows that? Yeah. DRX know exactly what RNG needs to do to find advantages in this game. Really nice play overall. Barrel getting a nice stun. And once the roots come down, there's really just nowhere to go. But there's also just, ju just a big difference in terms of team setup there. There's three members of RNG going in towards that bush where it's five members of DRX being ready for it. In terms of planning and setup, DRX is just the one that's ahead of it right now. And I, honestly, kind of looking back at earlier, something that Dash was hitting on in Jack, just when it comes to worlds and best of ones, that's never really been the LPL strong suit, right? I mean, it's been where they've been able to lose. Heck, even thinking about last year, RNG, they were in that group with Fnatic who didn't have their full roster, dropped the only game to them, just DRX now getting the best of them so far. I get nostalgic looking at that goal grab. <laughs> that reminds me of LPL there, guy. You know, this start with a goal lead into opposite mountain for the opponent's team. And ah. you know what? Yeah. You know what? It doesn't end yet. No. It starts a mountain and it becomes a roller coaster. Now the question is, do RNG have the tools to really bounce back from this? We've seen in the set pieces, in the fights around neutral objectives, you have to feel that DRX have an advantage, at least with how they're playing the vision game as well. There's just been no opportunities for RNG to find those flanks, to find those picks. Yeah, I feel like it might require a mistake coming out from the member who won't make a mistake, which is Deft. Because if, yeah. I mean, they have burst, right? If Deft is ever a little bit too far forward, if Wei, Xiaohu, and then either Gala are breathing on top of him, he's just dead, he's their consistent DPS. Sure, they have other damage, and maybe can still play a fight, but still, it would be heavily in RNG's favor. So, uh... Eyes are on death to see if someone who never makes mistakes makes a mistake. Yeah, and I think in, in terms of pressure that RNG can gain on the map, there's really only one member who's going to be able to get that for you. It will be brief in the side lane. The problem is he's just not in a position where he's going to straight up dive the Aatrox on the tower. And because of that, DRX gets so much mobility to move around as a four-man unit because even if we're in the four versus four, it's still DRX that's going to be winning out on this. Five to ten minutes ago, Breeze was 2-0-1, just taken towers, was in a position to kind of overtake the game. DRX managed to slow things down, calm and pick up two Hextech Drakes back to back. And I have to ask, as the next tower's about to fall, I mean, Lyric, expectations from regional play versus what we're seeing now, can we draw some inferences now we're 30 minutes in? Or do you think it's just the compositions are kind of influencing what we're seeing? I definitely think compositions are influencing. Again, I feel like RNG's kind of weird. Like, they're holding on to something from the past that worked, like the Vi, right? Coming in, we haven't really seen much Vi here at Worlds. To our way, bringing it in, something he was very comfortable on. Gala, though, going the complete opposite direction. Nila, not something I've really heard of in scrims being too popular with teams, but RNG didn't really play it during the split, but kind of experimenting. So I definitely think DRX have been playing good. Like, they've been reading RNG like a book in this mid-game. But RNG definitely uh, 
bring out a few different picks and different style than I'd expect. But I also think they allowed it a little bit because they slowed down the pace of the game and like leading into the first early game, it looked good. They tried to find the skirmishes, but I think they just got too overconfident in what they could accomplish with said skirmishes. And you know, you have to think back when they tried to look for Seeker or Seca rather at that third trick. But now moving forward, one minute and 30 seconds on the next trick. Baron is also up and available. Now the problem is that RNG has is that sometimes when the third drake is prioritized by, for example, the RX, at least you'd be able to threaten the Baron. But you don't really have the biggest Baron take team unless Brief is up with you on that top side instead. Black Cleaver was just picked up by him. What was that Frozen Heart? Infinity Edge secured for Gala on that Mila. Is this going to be enough to turn around a three and a half thousand gold deficit? I mean, the Tifa has to be perfect with that ult, and it may not even get a chance. I mean, right now, DRX, they've started up the Baron. They are trying to hammer this one away. 7,000 hit points secured. Oh, Zekka that... is on the back line. Can hop over the wall. Flash available to him. Baron has been stopped there. Yeah, we see they are able to force out the That's TP, big. so it's at least going to relieve pressure on sides that Breed has been able to put up. And I mean, heck, even if any kind of skirmish breaks on here, like we've been saying, DRX feel kind of comfortable in these 5v5s. It would take a misstep for RNG to come through. So DRX getting exactly what they wanted. Completely. And now Sekka still pushing on the top side as well. So there's a minion wave to commit a play on. You don't have the best vision control in terms of backing it up, but he can crash the wave, move down with his team, continue with the pressure. And remember, no TP from Breathe now. Shahu's the only one that's going to be responding to it. And as soon as he sees movement on the map, he's just backing off. And with so many members now from RNG on the top side, that's allowing DRX to get mi mi mid control once again. You can move that down towards the bottom side, and then Drake is spawning in 10 seconds. The good thing for RNG, right, is that they never overcommitted towards making that move towards top. They're like, okay, fine, if we lose a wave, it's whatever. Dragon's coming up. We need this. We'll be on soul point. They still have some control wards on the map, like we can see even in bot control brush. Oh, there was zero hesitation on that one. The way may not have liked it. That's a route secured, at least onto Ming. Now the turn around. Breathe is looking for a target. He gets Bramble smashed to the face, leaps over to a ward, and RNG escape with their lives. They started the fight, and they had to run for the hill. That's the thing. That should just be the fight disengaged. They can try and hop up towards the top side of the map to threaten the Baron if they want, but what our uh, DRX is going to do is just they're going to leave two members there, and the rest of the members of their team could just try to threaten them away from the Baron. Lyric said it just a few moments ago. This is not the fastest Baron taking team. You need Breathe there. There is no threat for Baron because of this uh, 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 composition they put together. DRX got the Dragon, they're on Soul Point, they're significantly further ahead, and it's just a great position to be in. You know, I agree. When I said that thing about the Baron, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's late for all Keep of us. Teamwork. I should have said, we said. Yeah, that's we usually said. the best default go-to. Go my apologies, that was well played, friend. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. Now, still, Baron has been started up, so let's get serious again. Way no flash, he does have that Q of course on the vine. Let's see what they actually look to achieve with this play. Starting to charge up the Vault Breaker, holding on to it. 3,000 hit points on Baron and Fatal Chains come back. 2,500, 2,000. Vault was inside. Smite! What? Smite! Smite! Oh! Smite! Oh! How? 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 This guy has always been the heart and soul of RNG. And somehow, first game at Worlds, he shows why. And Ming is the only casualty of that play as well. We need a slow-mo replay of that to see how that actually went down because oh. Wei is denied entrance to it, and it's Shahu who picks it up. Uh, lost points. Honestly, it looked like DRX recovering their base as well. We saw members trying to zone on the opposite side of the pit right. Zeka was 2K way right around. now. Is there a smite coming through early? There's a smite. That's just a pixel perfect together with the smite. It has to be like, you don't even see what it goes down to. Yeah. I don't think way smite is on cooldown. I'm not sure if that's a spectator. No, it's not way in there. First. Uh, didn't even get in the pit, so couldn't get it. Yeah. Oh, my word. That's so sad for DRX. Okay, okay. Is this enough <laughs> to bring RNG back into this game? We know Breathe can split push. With the Baron buff, it's going to be made even easier. That was one of the ways, maybe one of the only believable ways, in how they could win the game from the current state. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's enough to bring them back into a position where it's like, okay, now they're contending, right? Because yeah. they were kind of out in our minds. It would have required mistakes from DRX. Now for RNG, you're able to get push in mid. You can maybe try and find a pick if you start rotating the LeBlanc over the jacks and, and get back into the game. 
game that way. They are still at a deficit, though, and DRX are still on salt points. So they're not, it's not completely on even footing just yet. Yeah, but you can see at least they're in a position where they're contesting push on towers now. They're so forced back before earlier. Now with Baron Buff, at least they can move the pressure a bit around. Bree push in bot side. He get the first move. They get a bit of damage on the on the mid turret. You can continue this trend again. Move Bree down in the bot side. See who responds and just continue to continue with the rotations to puppeteer DRX around. I really need to see Gala doing something in this game. That Nila was first pick on phase two. He was answered with the Tristana. 0-1-1. Three and a half items completed, but Deft back on the world stage. 5-0-3. Four items completed. Stopwatch in hand. And look, I mean, 105, 105, 503, 006. Barrel is one assist away from James bonding it up. And for the time being, DRX have got the team fights. If they can control the split push, which they have, 40 seconds left on Baron. You have to feel this next dragon could determine the game. I was going to say Ice on Shahu, but he actually still haven't finished up the Rapid on Steph Cap. He's still sitting at components. I he's thought he was almost behind. there. Yes, he's an entire hourglass behind. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, and for Zekka, right? We've been talking a lot about Death. First time on the international stage coming up. Had two unsuccessful years in the LPL. Makes his way over to the LCK, where it was a little bit hot and cold, right? Had moments where he looked like the second best mid in the league after Chovy, but also at times where he wasn't so hot at all. So. And I see him come in, deal with the aggression coming from Shaohu, and honestly get the best of him so far. Yeah, now up to Brave to see why he can get done with the pressure. Kingen does not have that teleport yet, so if they send Sekiro up towards him, one minute and 20 seconds, Andre Drake. So there's still plenty, plenty of time for Brief to continue on the top side. The problem he's running into right now is that no one's in a position to actually facilitate him with vision. And because of that, he's so scared to walk out. Because if he gets picked up before Drake, that is just a soul going over to DRX. Okay, Lyric set up this Drake that Global just set the stakes for. If we look at vision, if we look at positioning, RNG currently pushing, they want to contest this. I feel like RNG are going to look for a moment to force, like, like, Honestly, would have been now when you see two members on sides because if you give DRX time to group up in mid, it, it just feels so hard because DRX, honestly, doesn't really even matter if you just let Jax push into turret. It doesn't really change the state of the game. As long as they can guarantee this next Drake, they're doing fine. So we're going to need to see some control wards come out. I feel like they need to control both entry points into river yes. into find that angle onto depth. Shao Hu Wei, and then either one of Breathe or Gala. And this is also one of the better times, because at least you have vision pockets now. You have uncertainty, so it's so important that they stay around Death here, because if he gets picked up, all the members are scourging for vision. It can just be a way for RNG back into it. Nature's Grasp is available two seconds before the dragon spawns. Death Caps secured for both mid laners. The Drake is inside the pit, and so is Wei. DRX grouped up. Zeka looking for the flank opportunity, but so is Ming, Larry. Yeah, RNG trying to find that way around. They know they need to, right? They need to find a way onto depth, but DRX making the right call, going to mid, pushing the way. Exactly, now you just get the priority, and there's gonna be pressure that RNG will need to respond to. They'll feel the pressure and will have to burst a Drake soon to force one fight, because the minion wave is something that you're gonna be have to paying attention to. Now, Drake down to half HP. Gala's got himself that GA available. Slap, 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 whip, whip, whip. Nature's Rot comes out. Way stepping onto the Dragon Pixel. Up three dragons a piece, but at what cost? Gala's going low. The apotheosis has already been used. The knockback is gigantic. It's Bioshik that goes down. Breathe gets one back. Death just got himself a double already. Now trying to fight out to breathe. The counter strike keeps him alive. Infernal chains don't pull him out. Three for three. Seth goes golden with a stopwatch. Breathe looking to stun. He finds it. He gets the shutdown onto death. It's Breathe Jacks the team fight. Not trying to close it out. Learning for another. Zeka's running for his life. 2v1. It was the Jax, but it wasn't in the side lane. It was in the fight. I honestly cannot believe that RNG were able to bring that back. Way, you still gotta be careful. Oh, oh, the blast cone. But here comes Freeze. Can he can it? The other one. Four versus four in oh, terms Zeka, of death. Don't do now it. Breathe, get oh, taken my. down. Zeka. Zeka, that's absolutely beautiful on the Akali as well. It looked like a fight that RNG was finally going to take. But in a one versus two, the man from the mid lane steps up and put them back on track. And he is so goddamn fed. Lyric, will RNG get another fight like that is the question.
I feel uh -huh. like it's looking rough. The fact that the fact that Breathe managed to play that so well, found numerous times he four stepped away until he was finally able to get the lockdown was huge. The problem is for RNG it's looking like Breathe, but for DRX they have two carries now. They have both Zeka and Def stepping up. I mean four zero and seven, seven one and four, and look, Def now has the GA. Gala's already popped. And with that, DRX feel very confident to look towards his Baron. Yeah, and you know, 10 seconds still on Breathe. He does have that teleport. It's the question, can the members of RNG stall it out as it's looking right now? No, you don't even want to kind of risk that one member is going to be going down because then that will just be the game. So DRX picking up the Baron <laughs> once again should be able to take more charge of it. But let's see how it actually pans out. Crucial by way by actually securing the drain. Yeah, I, I got to be honest, this fight was absolutely bananas, fellas. <laughs> there was a <laughs> all over the place. The key thing, though, way able to get on Deft early. Deft does manage to escape and find a few kills. But then we see Breathe able to get in there, forces him back. Def actually has to jump over the wall, uses that heal early on. And then him going for the rocket jump in Goldberg was absolutely crazy. It just felt like that with the moment Breathe waited for as well, because you see Def had a plan. He had to flash, he had to stopwatch, but Breathe just holding on to the Counter-Strike, like really waiting it out for the right time. And then of course, Seca just waiting and picking them apart like a scalpel. Slicing through round G's members here. Man, I can't believe that. I am also surprised that Wave even chased that down. I mean, Zeka was doing so incredibly well throughout the course of the game. He definitely was not going to be able to win that fight in a 1v1. Maybe, yeah. maybe hoping Breathe was a bit closer. Didn't work out. The ace ends up landing. And can Lightning Strike twice? Can the Baron be fended off by RNG? And can Breathe do that again? Because ultimately, he's going to have to, to claw back the deficit. It is still two minutes from the soul. That could be a game changer. Yeah, and I feel like it's so hard, right? We hit on earlier that RNG have no wave clear. They have no way of stopping DRX's push. And on top of Baron, just having the Tristana, who's just going to take these turrets so incredibly fast. So DRX is going to increase their gold lead. We're going to see members like King and Pioshik able to pick up more items on their next back. Then we're going to come into the final dragon fight where DRX should have a sizable item lead. Yeah, and two lanes now being pushed in. Yes, it's nice getting the objective here, but it's even more so just keeping RNG in their own base so they have no vision to play around with when they Drake finally comes up and gets active. It's even just like, you can continue here, get good reset timers. You can even look for a fight if Min gets pulled in. He doesn't, but he continues with the siege. 3,000 gold advantage. Thanks to the Red Bull Baron power play. A minute left on the siege. Bottom inhibitor is exposed. Middle is being secured. The little sapling is slowing down Gala, who may as well have played Evelyn. Nearly invisible this game. It has been about the death Pyoshik show, really, flanked and supported by everyone on DRX. Please don't get me wrong, but the way that those team fights and the vision have been played out, RNG have been unable to really maintain any foothold in this game. Two waves of supers. Baron's gonna time out in 30 seconds. You do not get a better play in 30 seconds to trade. Yeah, and honestly, RNG were one of the best teams in the LPL regular season at finding comeback wins at falling, Five, 10K gold behind, Copium. but still able to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Quick shot, I gotta say, when we have LPL versus LPL, I have no favorites. I have no favorites. I, I haven't followed our fit seat too heavily, but... Thank you, Chronicler, for that Now, one. 20 seconds. Both teams is currently on soul point, and even though DRX currently have to bleed, it feels like if Wei manages to get it, and there's ways to play it out, RNG may claw their way back into this game, but DRX not looking to lose the grasp of this game. 16 second flash timer for both Way. Correction for Def. Way has his up. This is for the soul. Dragon is being chunked down. King is coming in from behind. The engage is started. Oh, no, no. Barrel's gone. Barrel's gone. Show who just deleted him. The Infernal Chains comes out and Zek is going to run for his life. Death is staying alive at 12 hit points. The Dragon is now resetting inside the pit and Wade's going to run away. But Salt is not going to be able to use that dash over the wall. Now all of a sudden, five members of RNG turning the focus onto the Dragon. It's stolen. Yoshi oh, gets the soul. Death gets the kill. Followed up by another for Piyoshik. Breathe is still standing with the flash available. He's going to run for his life. Going to run for days. Get back to base and DRX might want to look for the win. We see Pioshik come back into the roster. Worlds gets the steal that matters and enables Death to keep popping off. You asked why. He answered. I can't believe you actually managed to steal that as a Maokai of all of the things. Now, Brief doing his best to hold it up, but he's still fighting five members off the side of DRX. Nothing that
that they can do. DRX and Death dominate RNG. And how sad are you? Hey, look at that face. It's never a bad day for anyone in the world. See the Alpaca <laughs> happy. Exactly, exactly. right? <laughs> Everybody, all of my True homies that. love Death. So, you know what? I have not met a single person that actually hated him and just the way he stepped up in this game as well. Seca as well in the mid lane. Like, they, them two was just a wonder duo in this game. And he